Welcome back guys, in this video I will be looking at 9.8 implicit differentiation. 9.8 represents chapter 9 section 8 of the Pearson A level maths pure maths year 2 textbook. The first part of this video is to go through what implicit equations are and what explicit equations are. Here are three examples of implicit equations. Each of these equations are called implicit equations because neither x nor y is the subject of the equation. Here are examples of explicit equations. Each of these equations are called explicit equations because for each equation, y is the subject. Let's have a look at some differentials. Question number one, differentiate x cubed with respect to x. That will just be 3x squared. Question number two, differentiate sine x with respect to x. That will just be cos x. Question number three, Differentiate e to the power x with respect to x, that will be e to the power x. Question number four, differentiate y cubed with respect to x. Okay, now I'm differentiating a y variable with respect to x. So how do I do this? Well, in this particular case, I need to use the chain rule. So I can rewrite that differential in the following form. d over dy, of y cubed dy over dx. So I can sort of see the dy's cancelling to give me d over dx of y cubed. Now, I can differentiate y cubed with respect to y, and if I do this, I get 3y squared dy over dx. Question number five. I want to differentiate sine y with respect to x. Again, I can use the chain rule. If I differentiate sine y with respect to y, I get cos y, and then dy over dx. Question number six, I want to differentiate e to the power y with respect to x. Using the chain rule, I can write d over dy, e to the power y, dy over dx. Now if I differentiate e to the power y with respect to y, I get e to the power y. And then the dy over dx. Question number seven. Crispy, I want to differentiate t cubed with respect to x. Okay, again I can use the chain rule. I can write the following d over dt, t cubed, dt over dx. I can sort of see the dt's cancelling to give me d over dx of t cubed. Right, so if I differentiate t cubed with respect to t, I get 3t squared. And then I've got the dt over dx. Question number eight, differentiate sine t with respect to x. Again, I can use the chain rule and write the following. d over dt, sine t, dt over dx. Now, if I differentiate sine t with respect to x, I get cos t, dt over dx. Question number nine. I want to differentiate e to the power t with respect to x. I can use the chain rule and write d over dt, e to the power t, dt over dx. Now if I differentiate e to the power t with respect to t, I get e to the power t, dt over dx. Okay, now we can actually make a conclusion. And that conclusion is, if you differentiate some function of y with respect to x, you differentiate that function of y as normal, and then you stick in dy with dx. In the same way, if you differentiate some function of t with respect to x, you differentiate that function of t as normal, and then you stick in dt over dx. So in general, if you differentiate some function f of u with respect to x, you should differentiate the function f of u as normal, giving you f dash of u, and then you stick in 
du over dx. Here's an exam style question. A curve C is described by the equation 2x squared plus 3y squared minus x plus 6xy plus 5 equal to 0. Find an equation of the tangent to C at the point 1 minus 2, giving your answer in the form ax plus by plus c equal to 0, where a, b and c are integers. Right, now, first of all, we need to find dy over dx, which is also called the gradient function. Once we have dy over dx, we can substitute x equal 1 and y equal minus 2 into our dy over dx to give us the gradient of the tangent to the curve c at the point 1 minus 2. Once we have the gradient of the tangent, and we also know that the tangent passes through this point 1 minus 2, we can then find the equation of the line using y minus y1 equal m in bracket x minus x1, rearrange it in the form ax plus by plus c equal to 0, where a, b and c are integers. Over here, I've got an implicit equation because neither x nor y is the subject. So I need to use implicit differentiation. If I differentiate 2x squared with respect to x, I get 4x. Plus, if I differentiate 3y squared with respect to x, I get 6y. And then I need to stick in dy over dx. Minus, if I differentiate x with respect to x, I get 1. Plus, now over here I've got 6xy. I've got a product of two functions. 6x multiplied by y. So I need to use the product rule for differentiation to differentiate 6xy with respect to x. So what I can write first of all is 6x multiplied by the derivative of y. So what is the derivative of y? It is just 1 dy over dx plus y multiplied by the derivative of 6x which is just 6. Plus, if I differentiate 5 with respect to x, I just get 0. Equal to, differentiating 0 with respect to x is just 0. So now what I need to do is make dy over dx the subject of this particular equation. After simplifying, I get 6y dy over dx plus 6x dy over dx plus 6y plus 4x minus 1 equal to 0. Then the next step was to factor out the dy over dx. Inside the bracket, I get 6y plus 6x equal to take the minus 1, the plus 4x, the plus 6y to the other side, giving me 1 minus 4x minus 6y. Now, to find dy over dx, I can divide both sides by 6y plus 6x, giving me dy over dx is equal to 1 minus 4x minus 6y all over 6y plus 6x. Now, I've got my gradient function. I can work out the gradient of the tangent to the curve C at the point 1 minus 2. What I need to do now is substitute x equal 1, y equal minus 2 into the gradient function, or you could say dy over dx. So after substituting x equal 1, y equal minus 2 into dy over dx, I get minus 3 over 2. So that minus 3 over 2 represents the gradient of the tangent to the curve C at the point 1 minus 2. So I've got the gradient of the tangent to the curve C at the point 1 minus 2. I'm going to call it m, which is equal to minus 3 over 2. And I know that the tangent to the curve C passes through the point 1 minus 2, which I can label as x1 y1. Now, my next step is to substitute x1, y1 and m into y minus y1 equal m in bracket x minus x1. Once I've substituted, I need to rearrange and write it in the form ax plus by plus c equal to 0 where a, b and c are integers. After substituting x1, y1 and m into y minus y1 equal m in bracket x minus x1 and then rearranging gives me 3x plus 2y plus 1 equal to 0 which is of the form ax plus by plus c equal to 0 where a, b and c are integers. In this case, a is equal 3, b is equal 2 and c is equal 1. Here's another exam style question. Find the gradient of the curve with the equation ln y squared equal a half x multiplied by ln in bracket x minus 1, x is greater than 1, y is greater than 0, at the point on the curve where x is equal 4. 
Give your answer as an exact value. Okay, over here we've got an implicit equation because neither y nor x is the subject of the equation. So I need to use implicit differentiation. First of all, differentiating a natural logarithm. If I have y equal ln f of x, then dy over dx is just f dash of x over f of x. This particular technique was covered in video 9.2. So if you don't know how to differentiate a natural logarithm, I would advise you to check out my video 9.2. Right guys, over here, I've got an implicit equation because neither x nor y is a subject. So I need to use implicit differentiation. Ln y squared, I want to differentiate that with respect to x. If I differentiate ln y squared, I get 2y over y squared. Then I need to stick in dy over dx. Equal. Over here, I've got a product of two functions a half x multiplied by ln in bracket x minus 1. So I need to use a product rule for differentiation. Okay, so if I use a product rule for differentiation, I get a half x multiplied by the derivative of ln x minus 1, which is just 1 over x minus 1, plus ln x minus 1 multiplied by the derivative of a half x, which is just a half. After simplifying, I get this equation over here. Now, ladies and gents, I am after the gradient of the curve at the point where x is equal 4. So my next step is to make dy over dx the subject. Remember, guys, dy over dx represents the gradient function. After making dy over dx the subject, I get xy over 4 in bracket x minus 1 plus a quarter y ln in bracket x minus 1. Now, ladies and gents, I am after the gradient of the curve at the point where x is equal 4. But there's a problem. My dy over dx is in terms of x and y. So I need to work out the y value when x is equal 4. So I'm going to substitute x equal 4 into this particular equation and make y the subject. When x is equal 4, ln y squared is equal to half times 4, which is 2. ln 4 minus 1, which is 3. ln y squared is equal to ln 3. Now I need to get rid of the ln, so I need to apply e on both sides. e takes everything to its power. e to the power ln y squared is equal e to the power 2 ln 3. The e and ln cancel out to give me y squared equal e to the power 2 ln 3. I cannot cancel the e and ln at the moment because I've got 2 in front of the natural logarithm. I can use the power rule. And after using the power rule, I get y squared equal e ln 3 squared. 3 squared is 9, okay? So y squared is equal e ln 9. Now I can cancel the e and ln, giving me y squared is equal to 9. The next step is to take the positive square root of 9, giving me y equal 3. Why do we take the positive square root? Because over here, we are given that y is greater than 0. So, I can find the gradient of the curve at the point where x is equal to 4. I know that when x is equal to 4, y is equal to 3. So I can substitute x equal 4 and y equal 3 into dy over dx, which represents the gradient function, to give me 1 plus 3 over 4 ln 3. Here's another example to our question. Find dy over dx when 3 to the power x is equal y minus 2xy. For this particular question, we need to know how to differentiate y equal a to the power f of x, where a is greater than 0, a is a constant. If you don't know how to differentiate something like this, I would advise you to check out my video 9.2. Okay, so over here we have an implicit equation, because neither x nor y is the subject. So we have to use implicit differentiation to find dy over dx. The first term over here, 3 to the power x. If I differentiate that with respect to x, I get 3 to the power x ln 3 equal. This term over here, y, if I differentiate that with respect to x, I get 1 dy over dx minus 2xy is a product of two functions, 2x multiplied by y. To differentiate 2xy, I need to use a product rule for differentiation. So using the product rule for differentiation gives me the following. 2x multiplied by the derivative of y, which is 1 dy over dx, plus y multiplied by the derivative of 2x, which is 2. So if I simplify this, I get 3 to the power x ln 3 equal dy over dx minus 2x dy over dx plus 2y. 
I can expand this bracket, and if I expand the bracket, I get the following 3x ln 3 equal dy over dx minus 2x dy over dx minus 2y. My target now is to rearrange and make dy over dx the subject. After factorising and rearranging, I end up with dy over dx is equal 3 to the power x ln 3 plus 2y all over 1 minus 2x. If you found this video useful, don't forget to subscribe.